How's it going, guys? So today at uh, Pearson Guitars. got this uh, Fender Highway 1 Strat uh, with a maple board for a refret. Here we are again. With this, uh, with the maple board, I wet it as well. Um, it, it helps preserve the finish around the frets and I, when the water is boiled away, I know exactly when to remove the fret. So here we go. So again, with the brush, just wet the fret. And I'm watching the water boil away. I'm watching quite carefully. And there's a there's probably about a second and a half to a two second gap between when you're burning the fretboard and when you are uh, just warm enough to be removing the fret. So it's quite a quite a gentle thing. Where did I throw the other one? Whatever. So there's a lot of there's a lot of dirt around the fret which I'll clean up before I start pressing the new frets in but there's no tear out and there's uh, and I, I have I have successfully preserved the finish around the fret so that I do not have to refinish the fretboard so I'm going to do the rest of these uh, off camera and I'll see you guys in a moment and we're back so all the frets are out now and I've cleaned the cleaned the gunk off um, and there's absolutely minimal damage to the to the fretboard, which I'm which I'm incredibly happy with. So now we're going to come in with this again. Uh, even though I can use a normal fret saw, uh, the the normal fret saw is just it's, it's just a bit too big. Um, I don't. Um, they do make a smaller one. Um, I don't have the smaller one. Also from Stumac. Um, for cutting fret slots, this is 100% the correct tool to use. But just for neatening up slots, this is really, it's a, it's a fantastic tool. So, uh, I'll do the same as last time. I'm just going to come in and do, just neaten up uh, one or two of them. Um, and then I will uh, do the rest off camera and I'll be back with you guys in a couple of moments. I'm going to come in with this knife shaped uh, needle file. And again we're going to be using Sintoms. There you go. So we're going to be using Sintoms. Um, Sintoms, um, I'm actually a South African distributor for Sintoms. So if you are looking for uh, the best quality fret wire in the, in the entire world, and you're in South Africa, uh, drop me a message because uh, I sell this stuff. It's incredible. It is the best fret wire um, money can buy. Um, really, really well produced. So. Uh, stainless steel frets on here um, the the customer 
wanted jumbos. So cool. Let's get let's get vending. Press it through nicely. Uh, this is also the Symptoms Fret Bender. Um, I've used this particular one for about four years. Um, it it is it is excellent. It works just as uh, it works just as well as the day I bought it on. Um, also, if you are looking for one of these and you're in South Africa, um, yeah, contact me. So cool. Now we're going to start cutting the fret wire. Uh, when it's a bolt on it's it's quite a bit easier to just get uh, the more exact lengths so I'm going to cut one or two then I'm going to fly away Stumac fret cutter works great got a rule I will not advertise something unless I use it cool so the fret wire is cut and prepped um, actually brought the the fret press inside this time so that I can uh, show you guys uh, uh, pressing some frets in cool so I've done the first two um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going on camera now just want to make sure everything worked out. So I take a little bit of this glue and just get it into the slot. And I take the damp rag, just clean the glue excess off, put the fret in, kind of press it in. On both sides just so that I can kind of get a uh, or the fret can get a grip then I bring it under the core and make sure that the core is actually pressing the fret because the core will hurt the fretboard badly if I if I press this not correctly and then make sure and give it a good press that worked out nicely so now just cleaning around it cleaning all the glue off that may have come out which is a good thing it means there's no space left in the slot because you want to fill the slot completely now I've got the dustbin right next to me over here and I'll take the flush cutter and just nip the end of the fret off into the dustbin you don't want to step on these if you think stepping on a piece of Lego is bad this is worse and this penetrates cool so now that I've, I've uh, fretted until the point where the heel has ended, I'm going to move over to a neck rest. Cool. And I will be using this uh, for the duration. This is just a Stumac neck rest. Yeah. So just carrying on the same way. As soon as I get into the the hang of it, I, I start doing two frets at a time. I can start doing that from the 15th fret upwards. You just can't cut the frets next to each other when they're so close together. When using these cutters, it's it's very important not to twist at all. You need to 
get straight up against the side and clip. If you twist, you will uh, you'll break the blade of the of the cutter. So don't twist straight. Cool, so the neck is fretted. Um, I'm really happy with uh, how it turned out. This, this strat is gonna turn out uh, unbelievable. So I'm gonna leave this overnight. Um, I just want the glue to dry properly before I start leveling. So now comes probably the most difficult part when it comes to a maple fretboard refret. Um, that is getting the getting the sides down um, without completely screwing up the finish. So uh, this is this is a two-part process. Uh, it's going to start out with uh, this this Stumac file where I'm going to uh, just run it along here for a little bit, um, and then on the other side and just get get the bulk of the of the frets uh, down and then come in with a 600 grit leveling beam so now I can still feel the frets on the side, but it's it's almost confusing. What is the what is the fret and what is just a sharp, what is just a sharp bit? Um, so I'm going to come in with the beveling file, also from Stumac. Um, let me actually use the neck rest for this. So I'm going to come in with the beveling file. Uh, and get the bevel on the side of the frets and then I will continue with this. So once I get to this point, so this point being uh, the frets have probably about 90% of their bevel um, I'm still going to do a little bit of beveling in a bit so 90% of the bevel and I'm just wanting to make sure that the fret tangs are comfortable I'll just take this and just gently I'm not pressing I'm just letting the file run run over from the bottom of the tang this file is very fine, so it, it just it, it glides over the finish quite nicely. From the side, I literally can't even feel the fret. That's a good thing. Don't rush. Do not rush. So there are two parts to the reason I use this very fine file. The one is obviously to just make sure that you don't even feel the tang at all. The other part, the look of the side must be absolutely uniform. So sometimes when, you, when you're filing the frets down, there's this almost overhang of these really, really, really thin pieces of the, the fret that might have still been left. And what this does is it just it breaks those off to make sure that you have a very, very nice, um, almost hard uh, line going so that everything just looks uniform. 
I'll now be straightening the neck with this Stumac notched straight edge. Now I'm going to come in and level the frets. So what I've done now is I've taken uh, just masking tape and just uh, stuck this string packet uh, around. I just want the thickness of the paper on the 12th fret. So what this is going to do uh, is this is going to create fall away uh, towards the end of the fretboard to make sure that over here the 22nd fret is the lowest fret. And we've come to the samurai swords part. So when I'm done, this is the test, it's a little cotton ball, when I'm done shaping the fret ends, the, I, I run cotton up and down, because by the, time you, by the time you finish working on frets, your fingers are so desensitized to sharp things, uh, that it's, it's, I find it really difficult to tell, it's like are these fret ends smooth enough, are they comfortable enough? I mean, it feels good, but what is good? So the standard that I have is a cotton ball. So I need to be able to run the cotton ball with pressing it hard up and down, and the cotton mustn't catch anywhere. So I'll show you. So I'm, I'm happy with where it is now. So and the cotton isn't catching anywhere. There's no cotton left behind. And we all know how easily cotton pulls off. So if there's any weird sharp ends or anything like that, the cotton is going to get it. Checking on the other side as well. I'm pressing hard. And the cotton doesn't catch anywhere. So that's how I know where whether my fret ends are smooth enough or not. I mean this does feel great, but when you do when you do this much fret work, um, your hands really do start to get like rough and desensitized so um, cotton is a good way to gauge it
So everything is back together now. The electronics have been cleaned. Uh, everything has been uh, nicely, nicely wiped down um, as far as possible. And we've got a set of elixirs on here, which I'm very happy about. So cool, I'm gonna, I've already roughly um, cut the nut. So now I'm gonna string it up and uh, just get the final height of the of the strings on the nut and then continue with the setup. Cool, so um, I've got the um, action really close to where I want it. I've got the neck relief to where I want it. Now I'm going to uh, cut the nut. Um, yeah. So there it is, uh, everything's done, uh, the action feels great, I've done the intonation, uh, I've uh, cut the nut, uh, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching everyone. If you'd like to know how I did the uh, setup and everything like that, uh, go back and watch the uh, Telecaster Elite video. Um, the setup on here is almost exactly the same as that um, yeah have a great day I hope to see you guys soon again cheers <laughs>